Hi, I'm Alistair, that's Jonathan, this is the Dodge Challenger SRT Black Ghost, and that is Edmund's much-loved Shelby Mustang GT500, and this is Edmund's U-Drags. Let's get on with it. Well, isn't this exciting? We have one of only 300 Black Ghosts. 807 horses, 707 torques, is a hefty 4,500 pounds, and is front wheel drive. Relax, I'm kidding! But we also have our legendary Edmund's own Shelby, which will be hitting back with 760 horsepower, weighs in under 4,200 pounds, has 625 pound feet of torque, and is also rear wheel drive. Don't forget to check out the Shelby in this race, this race, this race, and this race. These two are going head-to-head -head on the Edmunds U-Drag track, which starts with a quarter-mile drag, then it's hard on the brakes and into a 180-degree turnaround. Then they power back to start-finish. At the end of the first run, to keep it fair, we'll swap drivers and lanes and go back and do it again. Look, we can only do U-Drags if you like and subscribe, so won't you do us a kindness and hit those buttons? And visit Edmunds.com slash U-Drags for everything else. All right, all right, let's go. I am in our long-term Shelby GT500. I love this car. It's got the power. I've got some super sticky Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. Thank you, Tire Rack, for getting us that, those spares. We picked up a nail earlier. So we got some freshies. We burned off the mold release. I mean, that thing has a lot of horsepower, has more horsepower, but I think this car just puts everything together so much nicer. Launch control is really easy to do. It's essentially, if you put it in track mode, uh, you can, see uh, an LC on the dash, which says it's primed and ready uh, for launch control. Um, and then all you do is just two pedal it, left foot on the brake, floor the accelerator with the right foot, and it'll hold the engine RPM at the preset uh, limit. So 1500 seems to be a, a sweet spot for our conditions right now, as well as our, our track surface. Um, so let's just hope it gets off the line better than that thing. I know it's gonna stop and corner better, uh, so it's just a matter of, of horsepower when it comes down to it. Let's find out. So how do you launch a Challenger Black Ghost? Honestly, with difficulty, but we'll come to that in a moment. In terms of setup, we've gone into the SRT dashboard. I'm in custom mode. I've gone for track for everything. That includes the 807 horsepower, but for suspension, we're not in track, we're in sport because this is a pretty bumpy surface. And frankly, track is so brutal that you end up breaking traction. Then we're going into launch control and we're dialing up just a thousand RPM. This thing's got so much power, rear wheel drive, of course, that it can light things up very quickly indeed. Now, if you're wondering why I'm sweating like crazy, I haven't got the air conditioning on because I'm using the chiller to cool the intercooler. So, thousand RPM, left foot on the brake, right foot hard on the gas, release the brake, and away we go. This should be epic. Let's go. Five, four, three, two, one. Equal start, but he's gone. <laughs> oh man, that never gets old. Just got so much more grip. And he's gone. Love that blue oval power. And that's how you do it. Oh, well, Jonathan, I think you just had me. You just got more traction off the line, more braking, more cornering. I mean, really the only thing I don't have more of is horsepower. I actually got my braking pretty much spot on. It's not easy to get back onto the gas on this because it's not like a super smooth input. So you go from like trying to pick up, trying to pick up, and then suddenly it comes in with a dollop and then you get a little bit of oversteer and that probably cost me a little bit of forward momentum as well. I mean, it's still great fun and it sounds awesome and all the rest of it, but this is a muscle car. 
and that's a sports car that also does muscle car stuff. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. It does muscle car sounds like it's it's such the complete package. It's it's kind of it's kind of incredible that this thing exists. I think we need to swap cars. I really think you're going to feel the difference between 760 and 807 horsepower. <laughs> it's going to feel like losing. All right, we swapped cars. I am in the Challenger Black Ghost. I love the way this thing looks. I love the power that the engine makes. I'm gonna use the launch control. So let's hope this thing can pull out a win. I'm really rooting for it. I, you know, the Challenger is a really cool vehicle. It's just not as modern feeling as that Shelby. But let's go, let's give it our best. So it's like slipping back into a favored old suit. Honestly, I absolutely adore this car. We've done 25,000 miles in it since we, since we bought it. So we're pretty familiar with everything. I'm following exactly the same setup as Jonathan. So using the launch control, left foot on the brake, right foot on the gas, everything in track apart from the suspension, which we soften off a little bit because of the bumpy surface. I should win, but I'm feeling the pressure. I'm ready. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, I got a bad start. It's bogged down a little bit. But now I'm coming. Now I'm coming. Oh, oh man. Come on. <laughs> Shelby. on the brakes, she's a sports car. Good power out. Come on! Goodbye, goodbye, Mr. Challenger. Despite the dodgy start, I'm looking at the Shelby, leaving me for dead. Oh. Good effort, but not enough. Well, there we go. How did that feel? It's, you can drive it like a sports car. It's like what we keep saying. You've got so much confidence on the brakes and then it's just back on the power. It seems to just grip and go. And I looked across as I came out of the corner and you know, you were still scrubbing around the bend. It's just such a cool car. I wish I, I, wish I could buy it. Actually that launch control, I'm sorry I didn't mention it. There is a, a bit of a beat. Uh, so you have to just sort of uh, prepare yourself for that. But it didn't really matter. Like I leapt out ahead, but it wasn't, it was hardly any time before I saw you coming up and just, I mean, you were gone. Like it, it looks like you have more horsepower than I do. I don't know, it's not grip at that point. I'm hooked up. Yeah, I, I also forgot about the beat. We've launched this enough and then uh, I didn't want to be accused of jumping the start and I felt pretty confident to start with. But uh, yeah, it, it's strange. I think some of it's the gearbox, you know, you've just got such a nice double clutch gearbox in this Shelby and you know, it just it just keeps pulling. Yeah, you're you're right about that. The the gear shifts here are like seamless. Whereas with this gearbox, it feels like you know you just got your your torque converter. Like I mean, I'm sure it's more advanced than that. No, it's a one dimensional car, but it's a pretty fine dimension. Well said, sir. It's so good. It's so good. How about we check out the peak performance numbers by these two beautiful puppies? The quickest 0 to 60 goes to the Shelby's 3.8, a full second ahead of the Black Ghost's best time. In the quarter mile, it was the Shelby again with an 11.7 at 128.9, smacking the Challenger's 12.6 at 123.1. At the turn, the Black Ghost Pirelli P0 stuck around at the tune of 1.14 Gs. Pretty good, but the Shelby's Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s gripped even harder at 1.35 Gs. And at the finish line? Huh, if you've been paying attention, you already know this one by now. The Ford's best was 33.2 at 143.3 miles an hour, while the Dodge did it in 35.2 at 135, making the Dodge go boo. And now it's time to see where these four wheeled wonders end up on the Edmunds U-Drags leaderboard. Remember, each car's quickest run goes on the leaderboard regardless of race pairing. The Challenger Black Ghost muscles in between our Corvette Stingray and the Subaru BRZ with its best time of 35.2 at 135 miles an hour. The Shelby couldn't improve on its previous best run, so it stays put. 
Now let's check on our little video data thingy. So we do actually read the comments that you leave and we know that you were desperate for us to run our GT500 in U-Drags. So we finally found some appropriate opposition and it turned out pretty much exactly as we expected, Jonathan. Yeah, I mean, we knew that the, that the Black Ghost had a slight power advantage, but we didn't know how that would actually play out in the real world. Turns out, not very well. <laughs> the GT500 is such a well-rounded package. We said it in the in-car commentary that that is pure and simple a muscle car and a really charming one at that. This is basically a muscle car that doubles as a pretty impressive sports car. The way that it brakes, the way that it grips, the way that it steers, the way that it changes gear actually as well. It's just such an accomplished car. And jumping from that to that, it's like stepping into an entirely different world. There's so much more confidence in the Ford. If you're looking for a traditional, more traditional muscle car, then I think you're gonna, you're gonna fall more in love with that because that is just like another, another beast. It just, and it still looks very, very cool. Yeah. We kind of devised the U-Drag formula because it was losing drag races and we thought that it massively undersold its true potential. So this was almost part of like the, the germ of an idea, the genesis of the U-Drag's format, and we're delighted to finally run it. But now, after 25,000 miles, we are about to sell it. So if anybody wants it, we're open to, um, we're open to offers. We're all gonna go away and cry when it leaves. But uh, it's been an amazing car, and we've loved it. So on that rather somber and sad note, uh, we will bid you farewell. Check out edmunds.com slash udrags, udrags with an S, for all the latest udrag information. And while you're there, check out everything else that Edmunds has to offer. And of course, please subscribe to this channel. That's it for now. See you next time. Minus the Shelby.